Hi everybody, it has been an incredibly long time since I've made a video, like months, probably years, I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while, um, especially on this channel. I plan on posting this and more videos like this on this channel versus my newer one. If you are coming over from my teaching channel, Plan, Create, Educate, um, I plan on probably doing most of these videos over here. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe here. Um, I don't want to bog down my teaching channel too much with these kinds of videos and things like that. So um, as you can tell by the title, I'm pregnant. So I'm super excited. This is Gary, by the way. He wanted to sit on my lap. So he's going to be smelling my mouth because I'm talking. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, we are pregnant. My husband and I are finally pregnant. Um, this has been a really long time coming. Um, we are so excited. Um, I am actually 13 weeks today. So I am entering the last week of my first trimester and I will be um, starting school in my second trimester. Um, back with starting school you know, second second semester in my second trimester. So I'm pretty excited to be almost, almost done with the first trimester and thrilled that everybody knows <laughs> now. So um, we're super excited. I did want to come on here and talk to you a little bit about how we got pregnant and some things that I just want to have as for memories about my first trimester. I'm so glad that the first trimester is over. It, it hasn't been that bad for me, actually, compared to what I've heard other women going through. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the symptoms and things like that in a little bit. Um, but first, I did wanna go through how we got pregnant. Um, we have been trying to conceive for four years. That seems like such a long time. Um, four years ago, we pretty much knew Right after we got married, we wanted to have kids, like as soon as we could. So we tried, started trying right after we got married. Um, noticed, hmm, this is not that easy. Um, we kept going for a year, still nothing. We went to an OBGYN and decided to start running some tests and things like that and seeing if we could learn why this is not happening for us. Maybe they could help us a little bit. Um, so we, we did do that. They did not really tell us much. She just, um, they did an ultrasound, um, internal ultrasound, and they just looked at my ovaries and my uterus and they didn't really find anything conclusive. Um, they mentioned something about PCOS, but they didn't confirm that. Um, so it was kind of just all up in the air and I was kind of frustrated with the way that they told me those all that information It was kind of just like we have no idea and when you're first starting this journey It's like why don't you know what well, why don't you know this is you should know this is your job This is you're a doctor and everything like that. So I Think we were kind of frustrated. So we ended up going to a different OBGYN um, and stayed with them for the second year um, we actually did about three months on, I think it was letrozole. Um, I could be saying it wrong, I don't know. But it is a fertility drug um, that they use actually a lot of times for cancer patients, not for infertility. Um, what it's similar to Clomid, if you've ever heard of that one. I don't know a ton about it. If you're interested, I'll leave what the name is down below and you can Google it. Um, we tried that for three months with timed intercourse and still nothing. Then we went moved on to Clomid for, I believe it was like three months at a lower dose and then still nothing. Um, did another, I think two or three months at a higher dose of Clomid still nothing both of those drugs letrozole had very few symptoms 
for me. Clomid had a little bit, I was a little bit extra moody, but not really anything besides that. Um, still nothing. So we decided to, I started looking into um, somebody outside of the OBGYN office for reproductive endocrinology. So they're um, for infertility. They're specifically infertility doctors that help people like me um, or same-sex couples get pregnant. We went to them and they started off, us off right away, went back on letrozole for that time, and we were doing IUIs. We did two IUIs, um, so this was now the third year of trying. Uh, we did two IUIs um, about a month or so apart. Um, so we did it one month, it didn't work. We did, took a break, did it another month, didn't work, um, took a month break, and then at this point, this is when I had was switching from my old job at IBM and I was switching into the teaching position. So we were going to start our last IUI. This was going to be our third one. Um, basically the month before I started teaching and I went in and they told me I had cysts. So that was kind of like a break to my heart that we couldn't do it again. We can do a third IUI um, and at that point it was such a huge blow to my heart that I was just like you know what me and my husband were both just said we're just gonna move on to IVF we're tired of you know going through this we've been through this at this point it was now like going on three years this was like the third year of trying to conceive and the heartbreak of trying to conceive every single month is exhausting. It's like going through the stages of grief every single month to see that you've failed again at something that should be so natural. That was our first three years. Finally, um, I think we took probably, um, that was, let's see, that was like July. So we took August, September, October, November, December off. In December, I think we finally were like, let's try IVF, let's do this. Um, so in December we did our IVF consultation and we met with our doctor and sat down and talked about what the cost was, how we could get started with this, getting started the following month with our um, with our next cycle with the retrieval process. The retrieval process for me was, um, if you hear that moaning, that's Ellie. She is behind me. She sits in weird. She likes to sit behind me for some weird reason. She's very weird, aren't you, sweetie? Yes, you're such a weird dog. <laughs> it's crazy the amount of drugs that you put into your body in order to extract your eggs is, it's crazy. Um, I'll just leave it at that. It is absolutely insane. Um, I had bruising on my stomach. I had just crazy bloat um, around retrieval time. I actually ended up with OHSS, which is, um, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's like, overstimulating your ovaries um, and it's your ovaries basically have ballooned and gotten huge and it's super uncomfortable um, so it was we were not gonna have a cycle a fresh transfer cycle um, after our egg retrieval um, and we already expected that our doctor felt strongly about not doing that um, especially with the number of follicles that I had created um, <clears throat> so basically with all these IVF drugs, what they do is just create a crazy amount of follicles that you're going to have a ton of eggs that come out. I don't, I didn't write down all the numbers and I probably should have, but, um, I don't remember how many eggs total we have, but I think it was around like 20 or something like that, 20 something. Um, but the ones that made it to maturity, um, we had like... 
I want to say 15 that were um, fertilized and then 13 made it to maturity and then I think after the 13 10 made it to the um, five day blastocyst stage so we did actually half and half um, a regular fertilization and then the other half of our um, eggs we had use, um, fertilized using ICSI which is a process where the embryologist takes my husband's sperm and injects it directly into the egg super um, I mean if, if you're not interested in TMI all that kind of stuff this is not the video for you I should have said that earlier with a disclaimer but naturally uh, where they just basically in a petri dish put my egg and then put his sperm in there with them um, that way was the most successful the ICSIs were not as successful um, we only did half and half so our doctor suggested just because we don't know if that's an issue fertilization is an issue um, because we have unexplained infertility they've never told us any reasons on why we were not conceiving naturally um, so that's what we continued to do um, is we we chose to do half natural natural um, in a petri dish fertilization and then the ICSI fertilization for the other half um, so the ICSI ones actually I think matured slower than the regular ones but they all still worked great so at the end we ended up with 10 um, great graded embryos I think our grades were like if if you've gone through the process of grading your embryos and things like that we had a lot of double A's um, a few AB's and I think only like one AC or AB or something like that um, or BC or something like that but most of ours were great grades we ended up taking a break for a month because our doctor wanted my ovaries to go back to normal and then um, then we could go ahead and get started with a frozen transfer cycle um, so that was in our retrieval was in January of 2019 then we had our first frozen transfer cycle in March and I was super excited um, our, we had a family cousin that went through IVF, um, older than me, and she was successful on the first try. It's so common. I mean, we had unexplained infertility. There was no reason why we shouldn't have um, succeeded. So we had our first frozen transfer in March. Super exciting. Um, we ended up having a positive test, but my beta levels were only 12. Um, so that was quite a blow while it's over the um, five is when they consider you pregnant uh, for HCG beta levels but it was only 12 and that was about nine or ten days after our five-day transfer um, <clears throat> after that they wanted to just keep monitoring so I got another blood draw and the second blood draw ended up um, I think going up to 40 no it went down to 8 maybe went down to 8 and then the third blood draw they wanted to make sure it was gonna keep going down but it went up to 40 um, so it kept going up a little bit they wanted to confirm that it was not an ectopic um, I did an ultrasound for that one and they confirmed it was is not ectopic, but just to be safe, I had to have a DNC to remove any pregnancy tissue because it was not a viable pregnancy with the levels going up and down like that. Um, so that was quite a blow to have our first transfer feel like it almost worked. Um, I think that was like the most traumatic loss for me um, it was considered a chemical pregnancy it was my first ever pregnancy and it was really just super upsetting for both of us May off 
June off and then we started our second frozen transfer in July of 2019. And our second transfer, again, I think a little bit less excited, but still hopeful that it would work for us. Um, and yeah, so we went in for our second frozen transfer in July and we had a positive pregnancy test at about nine or 10 days after the frozen, five day frozen transfer. And we got our levels back were I think 80, Four or something like that which was much higher than the first time I we were super excited it was the first time we ever heard the doctors call us and say congratulations you're pregnant and we were super thrilled and super excited um, that was on a Monday and then on Wednesday they I went in for another blood draw came back and turns out our levels dropped by half um, and went down to 40. So another huge blow. It was another chemical pregnancy. Um, we were devastated again um, to lose not only our first one, but now a second one. Um, so we were just kind of devastated. Um, at that point, we were asking should we have done some genetic testing because at this point we have done zero genetic testing on any of our embryos um we did not want we don't know the sex of any of them we don't know any genetic details about any of them um our doctor was saying if they were completely abnormal they wouldn't have implanted but they were implanting um and so i was getting pregnant i just wasn't keeping them um, so we did some additional testing to make sure that I, it wasn't my body that was attacking cells. Um, so we confirmed that it wasn't my body. Um, I wasn't attacking anything. Um, we checked some other things. We had a slight scare that I wasn't, um, my blood wasn't clotting, but I had taken ibuprofen for a headache or something like that earlier that day. Um, so that could have also caused it. So did another test, blood clots fine. Um, but did a ton of, uh, you know, additional things that we did another, um, hysteroscopy, which I forgot to tell you in January, another reason why we couldn't do a fresh transfer was because I did have surgery. I had a polyp removed in my uterus, um, because our doctor does want a, basically a perfect playing field for when they implant or, um, place the embryo during a transfer um so we did um basically a hysteroscopy i believe it's called i could be wrong um in january that's where they saw the polyp and then we had it removed right before the egg retrieval and so we did another one in right after this July transfer um, to check and make sure maybe I don't have, if I have any more polyps. I was all clear. Um, I didn't have any more. Um, if you ever have to get those, it's like a saline. I don't know if it's a hyster, I think it's a hysteroscopy. Um, it's like a, where they inject saline and basically blow up your uterus to see the lining and check for polyps and things like that. I was all clear on that. Um, so yeah, again, just no reason, no idea, still un un unexplained infertility. And we ended up taking another break. Um, we weren't sure if we wanted to keep going right away. Um, I think, I know, sweetie. <laughs> we were considering doing um, PGS testing on our embryos, our remaining embryos. At this point, we had eight left miscarried naturally I did not have to do another DNC because my levels went down normally they weren't afraid of it being an out of um, out of your uterine pregnancy um, so the fear of ectopic wasn't there um, for this second transfer so I did miscarry that chemical pregnancy naturally and then um, we so we took September off and this is was my second year 
um, at my school teaching. Um, so I just really wanted to focus on school and this is this year actually, <laughs> this school year. Um, fo focus on school for August, September, October, November. Um, no, August, September. And then we decided, you know what, let's just, let's do this. Let's do it again. And then, so in October, we started our third frozen transfer cycle. This is like a 20, this is gonna be like a 30 minute video. Sorry, <laughs> but it's a lot. It's a, This is our four year journey. It seems crazy that we're finally, I'm finally sharing like all of this. So we had our transfer on October 25th. 2019 and we um, transferred our embryo and I wanted to show you there's our little embryo and there's a picture of us I've been trying to keep like a small journal of things just like how I feel and things like that I was afraid to even start a journal like this until eight weeks so this was kind of like remembering everything but that was our embryo. Um, we were pretty excited. This is the only difference, the differences that I did this time during our frozen transfer is um, I did acupuncture. And our doctor was like, it's not confirmed that it helps anything like that, but if it works, then we'll blame it on the acupuncture because this was our third transfer. Um, so we, Transferred, sorry for my dog chewing. She's chewing her bone, so if it's... Ellie, Ellie. No, baby. No, sweetie. She's not gonna listen to me, and I'm not gonna take it away from her. So, um, we did that transfer, and um, I think it was like 10-ish days later, and we got our first betas back and I was super thrilled. We took a test. The test lines had never been as dark as they were, as they were on this test. So I knew I was gonna get, I mean, it had to be at least over the 84 because last time when we took a test, I took a pre at home pregnancy test um, with the 84 for our second transfer and it was kind of faint. Um, but I took it this time and the lines came up and they were the same color so like the same shade like the test line and the Control line were the same darkness So I was super excited. I was I just knew it was gonna be a good day. So they called us and told us again The third time well second time they've told us congratulations third time they told us that we are pregnant um, I had a beta level of 187 so we're not out of the woods yet because the first level for us never has meant anything. So we took another test two days later and it was 334. Wasn't quite doubling, but it was going up. And that's what we wanted. Um, few two days later, we had a level of 508. Again, not doubling. Our doctor was kind of skeptical on it so we ended up having another blood draw um that was like friday so we came back in a, and on monday and took another blood draw and it was a thousand one hundred and fifty four again they weren't rising crazy fast like they're supposed to um but yeah so we waited another week that was i believe like four ish that would have been technically like four weeks pregnant. Um, so we did schedule an ultrasound for five weeks and four days pregnant. And that's, oops. That is what we saw. And it's very small at that point. That is only five weeks and four days. She thought she saw a um, I think it was a yolk sac is what they call it. Um, she thought she saw one 
she wasn't quite sure so we scheduled a, another ultrasound for exactly a week later at six weeks and four days and this time we could see a heartbeat um so that was um the only issue this time though was we were i have a very small gestational sac um our sac gestational sac is measuring a week behind but the heartbeat was right on time it was 117 beats per minute at six weeks and four days which she said was a wonderful beautiful heartbeat so we were we were pretty excited about it we still weren't out of the woodworks yet so we went in for another ultrasound a week later not quite a week but it was seven weeks and one day um we had to go in a little bit early for that one because it was actually the week of thanksgiving um so we ended up going back in but there's baby at seven weeks and this time the heartbeat was 153 beats per minute um so the baby was actually measuring exactly seven weeks and zero days and i was seven weeks and one day on that um day but the sac was measuring a week behind still so while it, we weren't completely out of the woodworks um we were much better we went back and um, saw our um, fertility doctor for the last time at eight weeks and we still have a growing baby and baby it's still it kind of looked like a, a pinto bean so we've been calling our baby bean <laughs> um, but they gave us an incredibly kind card um, that was super sweet signed by everybody in the office it was kind of a surreal moment that they were graduating us from our infertility doctor's office um, with an actual ultrasound photo that looked great um, the sack was still it's still a week behind baby is still growing on time um, so at this point, I think it was like eight days and, or eight weeks and four days. Um, and baby was measuring eight weeks and three days. So, but the sack was measuring seven weeks and three days. So exactly a week behind, but the baby's on time. Um, so she's seen the sacks that have been smaller and small like that, um, continue on to be healthy and normal pregnancies. So at that time, um, she said that we are vi have a viable pregnancy and we graduated. So um, I think that was probably one of the most emotional times for me is leaving our doctor's office and realizing I wasn't gonna go back to them for like another two years when we try again for number two <laughs> um so we were so excited we i had already scheduled um an ultrasound for the following week let me bring up the next photo this was nine weeks pregnant and that's a picture of our little bean um as you can see the gestational sac has grown and it's actually looks great um, she said that we have everything looks good everything looks perfect and she'll see us in four weeks and at that point my husband and I were like four weeks we've been seen once a week for two months <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> you don't want to see us next week I think we were both just like okay that's a really long time um, but otherwise everything is good and that was nine weeks and like four days and i felt pregnant <laughs> um i still feel pregnant um and we have finally made it out of the dark after four years of trying to conceive we've made it here and i can finally say i am 13 weeks pregnant today so so excited 
Um, I'll just go over really quick like some symptoms and cravings and things like that. But other than that, we're so excited and so blessed and so just thrilled. We've told family, we've told friends, I'm telling work tomorrow. My, my boss already knows because um, my principal already knows because of all the appointments that go along with IVF. Hi friends, it's me from the future, later in the day actually. And as I'm editing this video, I'm pretty sure you don't want a um, probably 50 minute video because that's like a feature length film about me talking. So I'm gonna end it right here. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really wanted to share my story because I felt like this is what helped me when I was going through all of this. Um, and it, it's super powerful to hear other people's stories. And I just wanted to make sure that maybe mine helped somebody out there, if not helped, you know, sorry for being shaky, but, um, if not helped, but at least, you know, informed somebody that you're not alone. And this trying to conceive process is really super long and it's exhausting and it's depressing and it's devastating. It's all the words that I've used over and over again in my video earlier. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to end it right here. I'm gonna cut this video into two parts. The second part will have all of my symptoms and things like that. Um, so I'm just gonna stop it right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.